one of the very first things I do when I begin a new garden is set up my compost bin. Composting really isn't that hard, which is why it's something I think most gardeners should consider doing. Join me today as I share with you some of the important information you need to know about composting, along with my buddy and composting expert, Tony O'Neill. Hi, I'm Gardener Scott, and composting is simply the controlled decomposition of organic matter. We as gardeners will take garden waste, yard waste, kitchen waste, even farm animal waste, put it all together into a pile or a bin, and then over a period of weeks or months, it decomposes under our control, and the result is the wonderful compost that we can use in our gardens. I've been composting for a number of years, and I consider myself pretty knowledgeable on the subject, but my buddy Tony O'Neill from the Simplify Gardening Channel has just written the definitive book on composting. The title is Composting Masterclass. Feed the soil, not your plants. And it is packed full with information about composting. After all my years of composting, and as much as I know, I learned a bunch from Tony's book. So I asked him to help me today answer some of the most common questions I get about composting. The first being, what are the top four reasons why a gardener should compost? When the first of those is because compost, when added to the soil, it's really good. It helps with aeration, it aids water retention, and it also stops erosion. Now, as soil has no humus in it, well, what happens is those little particles become finer and finer, and eventually they blow away in the wind or they compact, and that kills the soil. It pushes the air out of the soil, it stops the microbial activity and compost alleviates all of those issues. Reason number two, when you're making your own compost at home, well, you're a master of your own domain. And the reason for this is when you can make your own compost, you're controlling the waste in your garden, so it's not using uh, carbon to go off to a local landfill or something like that. And you're recycling the nutrients that have come from your garden back into a usable resource that can go back on your garden. This compost is already breaking down really well, and I only put this in here a couple of weeks ago, where we were just now. Well, that's the compost that was left from emptying these in order to make these up. But consider what's happened over the last two years. We've all been held captive. If you had to go and buy your compost and it was a struggle to get it. Stores were only allowed to sell essential items. Compost wasn't classed as essential, so you couldn't get it for your garden. I didn't have that issue. I came here, I grabbed the compost I required, and I put it in my garden. I made my own potting soil. I had none of those issues at all. Reason number three, when you're making your own compost, you're in control of the quality of the compost. Now, I know exactly what's in this ingredient. Every single thing that's been put in here, I've placed and I've grown in my garden, or I've sourced from a reputable place that I know doesn't have any issues. Not the same can be said for this stuff. Firstly, look at the difference. Granted, mine hasn't finished breaking down. This is only a couple of weeks old, but look at the color. This compost here is pitch black. It means it's been overheated. And when it's overheated, that kills all the microbial life. So therefore, this compost is sterile, it's dead. It's not adding any organic and microorganisms back into the soil. Whereas this is absolutely teeming with life already. Now, the other thing as well is I'm in control about what goes in here. So I know that no green waste that has had a pesticide, a broadleaf pesticide sprayed on it. Whereas here, I can't say that. Doing it this way, you know exactly what goes in your compost, you're in control of it. Another issue with buying store-bought compost is that 
it's really expensive now. Over the last couple of years, things are going up really expensive and bad compost is one of those things. Now, as you can see, I've got various bags here and they started off at £4.50 and they've gone right up to £9.50 per bag. Now, wherever you are, I'm sure you've seen the compost has increased. Now, all of these bags here equate to about £100 worth of compost and they probably wouldn't even touch one of my beds. You know, I, when you're gardening on such a large scale like I am, you can't use this, it just doesn't become economic. So producing your own compost at home allows you to put as much or as little as you want on, but you don't have the financial costs associated with it. Making compost to improve the soil is clearly my top reason, but to have control over the ingredients and the finished product and then save money, well, those are also among my top reasons for making compost as well and why I recommend it to all gardeners. There are so many different ways to set up a composting system from just a basic pile on the ground to some big plastic bin that you purchase. So I asked Tony what his favorite way was to compost. What kind of system does he use? So another question was what type of compost bay do I like? Whether is it concrete, plastic? Well, I'm gonna tell you, I like these pallet style bins. Now, this is essentially three pallets and an extra pallet that you can just slide up and down like this for the front. So you can walk into that bay. It's easy to pull things out. And then I've covered this with this Corex flooring protection and this available at most Home Depot stores. But the reason I've done that is because it stops that cold air coming in and um, cooling the compost down. Now, I prefer these over like concreted compost bags because what happens with cold composts is that in colder weather, that concrete sucks the heat out of the compost. So we are insulated here with the timbers and we can get much higher temperatures. It also allows any excess water to drain through rather than a concrete one would hold it there like a pool. So for me, a concrete area like this is perfect. And to be able to uh, control the water, all I do here is I throw over a black plastic sheet over the top and a carpet over the top of that. And this is then held down with a few house bricks just like this and this is enough to shed the water to the outskirts for it to run down the sides and keep the the compost at the appropriate moisture levels one other thing i will say to you is eventually we will put a roof over this just to control that moisture a little bit more but the answer to your question i prefer the pallet style bins I like pallets for my compost bins as well. And this has been the way I've been doing it for a few decades. At the end of this video, I'll put a link to the video where I show how I made this setup and how you could use pallets to create your bins as well. But there are many more options out there. You don't have to choose pallets. And that's one of the great things about Tony's book. Even though he prefers a pallet system and I prefer a pallet system, he covers just about every conceivable option for you to set up a compost system that will work best for you and your garden. And in the description below, I'll put links to Tony's book so that you can add it to your gardening library. I think it's a resource that all of us can benefit from. Now, when we have our volume of organic matter in our bin ready to go, one of the questions I get most often is about the temperature. What are we supposed to be looking for when we're cooking our compost? So I asked Tony about the temperature and how important it is to monitor it on a regular basis. Temperature in a compost pile is really important too. And the way you tell the temperature is with one of these. Now, this is about two feet long. It's a compost probe and basically you can see on here it tells you the temperature values and we go through three different colors in this 
temperature probe you can see it a yellow a green and a red and that all relates to the three phases of the heat within a compost pile and we'll go through those in a moment but when you're producing compost at home it's important first off in order to get those greens which are your nitrogen and your browns which are your carbon sources get that ratio right because without that you're never going to raise that pile up to a high enough temperature now the three phases of temperature are the psychrophilic stage which is up to 50 degrees fahrenheit then you go to the mesophilic composting heat stage and that's between 50 and 105 degrees fahrenheit and then after that you've got the thermophilic stage which is anything over 105 degrees now in order to kill pathogens and to um, get rid of weed seeds to kill those off you need a temperature above 130 but it's really important to stay below 170 in the heap because once you stay uh, once you go above 170 you then start killing off all of the microbial life the bacteria and also the fungal life within the compost heat in the compost is really important and the easiest way to understand what's happening in your compost is looking at those heats think of it like a sine wave up and down so you've got peaks and troughs as you first build your compost pile it climbs to a peak and that could be as high as 160 degrees fahrenheit and then it'll start to cool back down now on the cool down that's when you know there is something going wrong with your compost and i don't mean that in a bad way but what it's telling you is one of three factors you need to check number one is there enough food number two is there enough moisture and number three is there enough air if you feel the compost has got enough moisture and we'll cover more on that a bit later then we've got to look at food if it's a new heap we know we've got food in it if you can see some of the organic matter then you've got enough food so the only thing it can be then is air so that tells us we need to turn that compost when we turn the compost we will see it start right in the second peak of the sine wave and that allows us to uh, understand exactly what we need to do as the compost goes through its phases of heat with all of the food and moisture and oxygen that those microbes need, you really don't need to spend a lot of time composting. It's all about the setup and the ingredients and being aware of what the temperature should be. It's no coincidence that I have and use the same type of thermometer that Tony does. I use this to monitor my soil temperature and I'll use it to monitor my compost temperature as well. Now, in a region like mine that's very windy and very dry, it does offer some challenges to make sure that you get the right balance between the food and the moisture and the oxygen. So I wanted to hear Tony's take on the moisture, how important that is for those of us that find it challenging to keep our pile moist. Moisture in compost is really important too and I would argue that it is the most important factor even above the carbon to nitrogen ratio because without moisture in the compost number one it won't break down or if there's too much moisture it becomes a smelly mess and it's anaerobic and you end up getting that horrible eggy sulfide smell. Now the other thing about water is the fact that you need to be below 60% moisture content when you're talking about the water in the contrast. Think about compost as a living organism. All life needs water to survive and things like protozoas, fungi and bacteria and what have you, some of these are able to move about on themselves and others use water as a way to actually migrate around the compost pile. So it's really important when you're getting your compost what you need is compost that has about 60 percent moisture retention and when you squeeze a nice handful like that it should stick together in a clump but then when you do that see how that falls apart that tells you that that's perfect the perfect consistency for water so give it a good squeeze it holds and then it breaks apart 
So if you get more than one drop out of this compost, you know you're too wet. But what we don't want it to do either is become too dry. So anything below 30, you will start seeing the microbial life dying off and um, the compost from slowing down and then stopping completely on the actual composting process. Now you can see this compost, you know, it's getting there. You can see a lot of soil within this now. And this is only a couple of weeks old. It needs a turn again because we are now coming down into that um, dip within the sine wave of the compost heat thing. So it needs a turning again. But I only turn my compost once. But moisture is the most important thing. Get this right over above everything else and you'll always make compost. A moisture level of 30% to 60% is doable. Even in a dry region like mine, where in the summer we might have single digit humidity. It might mean watering the compost pile every single day. I've tried using moisture meters in the compost pile with mixed results. Like Tony, I prefer to use my hand to see how moist my pile is and that gives me the guidance I need. Check out Tony's book. It's just so loaded with information that all of your questions will be answered beyond what we've covered today. I'm Gardener Scott. Enjoy gardening.